Well, welcome back. It's Bobby again from Fifth Avenue Cakes, and today I thought it would be fun to show you how to take a plain cupcake and make it fabulous with some royal icing. So right now we have a nice lightly vine cream green colored domed cupcake, and it tastes good, but there's nothing about it that pops out or says anything. So we're going to jazz it on up with some flowers. The first flower we're going to do is a rose that we're going to pipe directly on there. I'm using a number 104 piping tip by Wilton and I'm using two colors uh, a light yellow towards the wide end of my tip and a darker yellow towards the narrow end of my tip. I want my tip to be at a 45 degree angle with the bag at 430 and I'm going to be directly touching that cupcake with my tip upward. I'm going to pipe a fan-like pedal with constant pressure and I'm going to ease off as I come down towards the bottom and release. That's my bottom pedal. Now every once in a while you'll get like a little hump in there. So I'm going to show you what you want to do if you get that. With a dry brush, you just want to kind of coax it down. Nobody's going to see that because we're putting a pedal inside. So we're going to bring our tip back and we're going to make sure that our tip is clean. We're going to bring it right to the corner exactly where we started that fan. And the idea is that now we're going to catch it with a loop inside to make it look like a bud. So we're going to raise that tip up as we put constant pressure in and we force that icing to turn and loop in. And then come down as you release pressure. Now I can see that I caught but I didn't loop as much as I wanted to. Rather than start over you can just coax that in a little bit. A lot of times it'll catch every once in a while it won't. So you can use your dried brush and just kind of coax it in to give the look that you want. Now we're just going to add a left and right pedal starting again at this side Again, I'm at a 45 degree angle. I'm going to come up, fan out, and come down to make like that pedal is opening and standing up. And I'm going to repeat it again on the right side, doing the exact opposite that I did on the left. And release pressure as I come down. I'm going to just tuck in these little edges here. And it's okay to bring your flower down a little bit. Because I'm on the dome cupcake, sometimes it won't lay exactly how I want. I'm going to go ahead and add in the calyx and the sepals. So what I like to do is I'll with a number three tip and a soft consistency icing, I'm going to pipe a dot so I know that's the center. And that way I know where I'm going to begin. I'm going to bring in my center sepia and just pipe up and get thinner as I decrease pressure and I release once I have the lengths that I want. I'm going to come over here, pipe another little ball and bring another sepia up and I'm just going to turn so I can get this one in over here and then I'll show it to you if you can't see it. But I'm doing the exact same thing. I'm decreasing my pressure so that it, the sepia becomes thinner at the top. And then you can go ahead and put in your rose hip. Now I'm not going to put in my vine right now because I'm not sure what direction I'm going to take this flower. The next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to pipe a bud right over here. So to type a bud, we're going to do the exact same thing we did for the rose without hitting it. We're going to make that fan, release pressure, and again I have that little hump. I'm also piping behind that rose. To make sure that I get that curl to catch, I'm going to lift up my petal a little bit more, my tip a little bit more and come back down. 
and I have a nice bud with a nice curl as you can see. And again I'll go ahead and add in without damaging the rose in front of me my calyx and rose hip and sepals. Now the sepals are these green viney things that go up and on a bud it is okay if you have them go up a little bit higher because of course on a bud it's closed more and you have more greenery showing. Now I don't really want to draw a vein or a vine coming down that way so instead I'm going to give the illusion that one is there and the way I'm going to do that is I'm going to comma pipe with constant pressure and that same tip make a big ball release my pressure at a downward slight motion so that I have a nice little comma looking leaf and I'm just giving the illusion that there's something there this one came out a little bit too small so we're going to just take it up with a damp brush Royal icing is very forgiving the reason I didn't go ahead and pipe that bud first is because I wanted my center flower to be in so I knew what direction I was going rather than letting my top flower dictate to me now just pipe a little dot right there It has a smidge of a point, so we're going to take our damp brush and we're just going to take that down. That gives you the illusion that it's coming down towards the flower without putting in a big chunky vine. And now I'm going to do a wisteria looking flower. And to do that, we're going to do a snail's trail, but we're going to offset it a little bit. So just like you do your normal snail's trail, you're going to pipe your ball release pressure, pull out your tail. I'm going to come down a little bit lower rather than making it under it. So we have a little bit of offsetness going on. If you have trouble doing this, instead of releasing, you can always do your ball and come back down like so. And that way you know you're exactly where you should be. So either method is fine. I want it to slightly curve, so I'm going to start bringing it over this way just a hair so it makes a slight curve so it doesn't look like it's going completely straight since flowers are not straight when they grow. And leave it like that. And then I'm going to do some fun little five petal blossoms. I'm using a blue color and the way I chose my colors was I went to the color wheel and I looked for my complementary colors and my triad colors because I knew that they would definitely match and it would give an interesting look to my cupcake. So I'm piping my ball, I'm releasing pressure and just bringing in that petal. If it doesn't come out exactly the way I had intended I can take a damp brush, that one's a little bit too damp that's alright, we can fix it. It's, everything is fixable and nature is not perfect. And then I'm just going to put a little teeny dot of yellow in the center. And the consistency I'm using for these flowers, the wisteria, the little blossoms, are soft consistency. The only thing that is stiff consistency right now is my rose and my rosebud. So again I'm going to do the exact same thing. I'm just kind of moving direction to give it a little bit more movement. That petal's a tad short and I know I'm not going to be able to lengthen him with my brush so I'm going to remove him gently off of my cupcake and re-put him in. That's better. Just by using 
different piping techniques that you've already learned and that we've gone through, you can make a variety of flowers and leaves that will give you an amazing look. I didn't show you how I did that center without a point, so I'm, I have one more blossom to do, so I'll explain that. I'm going to put another blossom, oh, right about here, I think, so that we have a nice little triangular shape going on. Threes are always a good number. They're pleasing to the eye. You don't want your petals to be directly across from one another because they'll end up looking like a little man. So to make that center dot, I'm going to pipe with light pressure. I'm releasing my pressure and I'm going to swipe to the side with my tip. And that gives me a nice little center for my flower. And now I'm going to just add on a little bit of purple dots to give the illusion that we have some more flowers going on. But before I do that, I am going to start adding in my vines or I'm not going to be able to connect things. So we're going to take our rose vine. And even though roses definitely grow pretty straight because that has a thick stem, this is kind of a fantasy little cupcake. So we want to not do that. We want to make our connection and give a little curve to our vine just to make it a little bit more interesting and to be able to make connections to what we're already working on. So I'm going to bring that down here. I'm going to pipe out some leaves by making pressure, releasing it, and pulling it out, and then taking my brush and dragging it through the middle to give me that center vein. I'm going to turn it, do another one over here, constant pressure, build up that ball, release pressure, and drag that tip in. And then go in and just shape it so that it looks more realistic. I'm just going to put a few more on. And I'm going to bring my little wisteria closer to this spine. Keep your tip constantly clean. And like I said, we're only giving the illusion that everything is connected or a spray. Got a little bit of green on there, but that's all right. It worked out just perfectly. It looks great. And then I'm going to put, to balance it out, I'm just going to give a little bit of a curve for some purple dots. So I'm going to start with, well, that's blue. I did label my bags. I have B for blue, P for purple, and G for green. Since they all were the same tip size, I knew I would grab the wrong bag. However, in order for that trick to work, you must look at your bag. And I didn't. So I'm going to make a nice size circle. And I'm going to like decrease the size as I curve around. Keeping in mind where I want this to end up. That one did not release on me, which means I did not release my pressure. So if you're having trouble with any of these elements I'm showing you, it's either your bag position, and right now I'm at a little bit less than 90 degree. I'm not quite straight up and down because my cupcake is curved. For these I was at a 45 degree angle and the same thing with my blossoms. So it's either your bag position or how heavy you're pressing your icing or your consistencies off. So if you're having a little bit of trouble, try looking at some of that to see if it works out. I'm going to 
just see how that would have looked if it had grown this way, if it had come together like the Beatles. I just love that song, sorry. All right, he did not work out. My icing is getting a little bit stiff on me, but I think we'll be able to finish this little cupcake. So release your pressure, bring it around. And you can make these as close together as you want or as far apart as you want. Bigger than I want though. What you don't want is for your size to be getting larger as you go up. So you want your biggest bead to be down and your smallest ones to be up on top. And that'll give you a nice illusion of some sort of a little flower from nature that's out there. And this one is just giving me trouble. I think I'm going to turn it. That's the other thing. I'm not, I don't have this cupcake directly in front of me and I just realized you can't see what I'm doing. So we'll do it again. I'm going to make my contact. I'm going to release my pressure and bring the tip around. Of course, I am getting stuck on the easiest thing possible. And because I'm working with such a big tip, a three is pretty big. I normally work with a two or one, I'm just giving it a little teeny bit of pressure. I'm not worrying about the peak because I'm going to take that down with my brush. I'm more, I'm more concerned that I get the size that I want since my tip is a little bit bigger than I normally work with. And you can work with that as long as you watch the control of pressure that you put on your bag. And now I'm just going to randomly add in some leaves. So maybe we have some leaves that are coming down this way or actually going up. Went the wrong direction. Leaves are bigger on the bottom. So you want to make a teardrop with pressure. Ease off your pressure. Bring your tip down into your cupcake and go up. I didn't mean to turn that on you. I just, I'm not getting the angle I need to get the leaf that I want. So there's my three leaf clusters right there. And I'm looking at my other cupcake just to see what I did. So it's a little bit similar. It's not going to exactly be the same. So I'm going to put a nice little leaf in the middle of these guys. Teardrop, come up. And though I like his shape, he doesn't have a center vein. So we're just going to kind of put that in there. That's not deep enough for me. So I flattened my brush. I'm just bringing it in. Remember, it really doesn't matter what design you choose. People are just going to love your cupcakes. They're going to be full of color and beauty, and they're going to go crazy over them. I'm going to put a couple more little purple ones, I think, right here. Same kind of like the wisteria coming down in. Actually, he's pretty filled over there. I'm going to put some blue dots over here. I've got a little bit of space that I think I don't really want. So I'm going to, rather than put blossoms, that one jumped on me. Just some pretty little teardrops coming down. These I'm not going to connect. I just want to give the illusion that they're there. And I'm kind of decreasing size as I go down and following the line of that wisteria. So that's it. In a matter of, I think, what, 15, 10, 15 minutes, you have a gorgeous, beautiful cupcake that went from plain and boring to, wow, how did you do that?
So I hope you have fun and join me in the next video.